Coming up in the news, the Stone Crab restaurant officially opened. If you have plans to travel on Valeria, several sailing dates have been cancelled. And the Grand Bahama Taxi Union helping students to prepare for the new school year. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Wolf Parkinson. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news tonight, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, applauding the new owners of the Stoned Crab Restaurant for expressing confidence in the Grand Bahama economy. The DPM's remarks came during the grand opening of the newly renovated structure last evening. A cross sector of the Grand Bahama community turning out for the grand celebration, Italia Hall was there. It was a grand occasion as residents from throughout Grand Bahama gathered for the grand opening of the Stone Crab Restaurant on Taino Beach. Owner Olivia Page purchased the building in 2014 and fully renovated the restaurant, keeping only its original structure. She reflected on some of the challenges the island has encountered over the years, but says business has been going well since they opened their doors earlier this year. All this, the Bahamians, and that is what I love so much about this island, never lost their faith, never lost their happiness and friendly to everybody who comes visit. No matter how bad things go, everybody feels welcome here. So in 2014, there was an opportunity for me to buy the Stone Crab restaurant, thanks to Mario Donato, with the help of my um, former partner, Thomas Marshall, um, who helped me financially buying this and rebuilding this. I was able to create this beautiful place. President of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Roll, says there is so much potential in the area of the Stone Crab restaurant, and he announced that an investor has expressed interest in a nearby property. He also applauded the owner for investing in the local economy. As this strip is undergoing a rebirthing process, each business in the immediate area represents a part of the body, and no part is more important than the others. It is essential for us all to understand the significance of variety on the Strip as we seek to become an even more attractive tourism destination. We must recognize the value of diversity in our marketing of this area, as it is important to appeal to the different groups of people that visit and live on our beautiful island. Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest says he is pleased that the restaurant is open for business, adding that the investment is good news for the island. This is a perfect addition to Grand Bahama and to our vibrant, growing tourism market. And yes, I did say growing tourism market. And you don't have to believe me, the numbers prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that Grand Bahama Island is poised for a major comeback. And I'm very happy to hear uh, the President agree with me. I believe that Grand Bahama Island will experience several exciting new major projects which are about to be launched and the vibrant entrepreneurial spirit we are helping to birth here on this island and throughout this country. A reception was held following the opening ceremony where attendees had an opportunity to enjoy the atmosphere. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Meanwhile, the president of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce giving his thoughts on the future of Grand Bahama. Tonight he says while the island continues to struggle, it will take a concerted effort to move this island forward. An economic rebound, President of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce, Greg LaRota, says if half of the projects announced comes to fruition, then Grand Bahama will be on the right path to making a comeback. But he says the challenge this island seems to be having is attracting new investment. Because maybe when you look at the setting, when you bring an investor in now and they look at the island and they see um, <clears throat> so many uh, businesses that's closed now, um, it may not give them that warm, fuzzy feeling that this is the place they want to be. And so um, we need to start somewhere. I see the government pushing uh, 
the small business initiative and we know that uh, most e economies um, kind of rely on small businesses to to fuel it. And while the Grand Bahama Port Authority is responsible for the Freeport area, the question is often asked, is this entity doing enough? My short answer to that will probably have to be no, because we, we can always do more. Uh, I'm not saying that they're not doing anything. Um, I'm sure they're out there trying to, to drum up business, but um, uh, there's stiff competition to get business, uh, not just to the Bahamas, but we have to compete against other areas in the Caribbean um, and other jurisdictions where um, these companies may be looking to go. So the Port Authority can't do it alone. Many local businesses have closed their doors for various reasons, from the destruction by major hurricanes to the high cost of electricity. LaRota says all stakeholders must come together to revive Grand Bahama. It seems like every few years something happens. Now, meanwhile, um, the government is trying to uh, put initiatives in place to make it easier to do business. Um, but the challenge, uh, I, I think, with that will always be that um, you have to look, uh, I guess, carefully at the, the big picture. And sometimes uh, um, if you follow what's happening uh, in the media, um, the government may put a policy in place to make it easier for some, for some sector to do business. And then you have another sector complain that it's it's causing issues for them though. And so everyone has to be involved and, and be a part of the discussion. In other news, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources is hosting a four-week aquaponics program for students across Grand Bahama at the Jackie Ridd High School. This morning, a closing ceremony was held and participants had an opportunity to hear from the minister responsible for agriculture. He shared some key advice with the group and some of the opportunities available in the field. Italia Hall reports. The Aquaponics Summer Discovery Program gives high school students access to new advances in agriculture, science and technology. The program, which is the first of its kind on Grand Bahama hosted by the Ministry of Agriculture, had a total of 21 participants from various schools on Grand Bahama. Program facilitator Charles Wayne Hall says there are so many disciplines in the field. The things that we have learned can apply to even some of the other fields that, you're, that you want to go into. What I found most amazing is that this bright young group of students here, young men and women, and they all come from different schools, but they all have a thirst for knowledge. And it amazed me to work with them over the past four weeks, to see them, they literally were like, were like a sponge, they absorbed everything. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Honorable Michael Pintard, says he believes that aquaponics is a part of the future thrust of agriculture in the Bahamas. The summer program is but one example of the ways in which we wish to engage with you. We intend to form an agriculture cadet program that will run for a three-year period so that you can learn various dimensions of agriculture and over time, marine sciences as well. At the end of which, you are able to obtain scholarships to study both locally as well as internationally to further your studies. So we are excited about the future. The truth is, agriculture can be a greater contributor to the GDP of the Bahamas. These students shared their experiences during the four-week program. As an aspiring marine biologist, who wants to study sharks? I never thought that I might have fallen in love with a course such as aquaponics. When Mr. Norris Bean came to me with the idea of starting, no, of participating in a summer program with aquaponics, I thought it didn't make any sense. But then at the same time, I, saw, I thought that it was going to be a helpful opportunity to steer me on the right path to becoming a marine biologist. This program has opened my eyes to the many different components involved in aquaculture. When we were first introduced to aquaponics, I thought it was very boring. But as we went further in depth, I realized that it's actually quite interesting and could be a future interest of mine. Following the short ceremony, certificates were presented to the group. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News.
Switching gears now, the governing free national movement preparing to celebrate the anniversary of the party's rise to power as the government of the Bahamas 27 years ago. On August 19, 1992, the FNM unseated the then governing progressive liberal party to become the government of the Bahamas. In observance of the 1992 victory at the polls, the FNM Grand Bahama Council is planning a Thanksgiving church service for this coming Sunday morning, August 18th at New Life Worship Center off Coral Road at 9 a.m. The various constituencies will also host back to school giveaway jamborees this coming Saturday. In other news, the Valeria Caribbean apparently experiencing more challenges and is announcing the cancellation of scheduled sailing dates for the next three Saturdays, August 17th, 24th, and 31st, due to operational reasons. Now, Grand Bahamas Fast Ferry Service came under fire last Friday as hundreds of irate passengers claimed they were treated unfairly while at the Port Everglades waiting to board. The ship that was set to sail to Freeport that day experienced a major delay after not receiving clearance for a few hours by U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Some 200 Grand Bahama passengers were left stranded in Fort Lauderdale. The Valeria also cited operational reasons for last Friday's Freeport cancellation and Saturday's delay in sailing from Port Everglades. Well, the Ministry of Tourism is preparing to close out its Junkanoo Summer Festival in the Smiths Point community tomorrow evening beginning at 6 o'clock and it promises to be a whole lot of fun while providing an economic injection in that community. Public Relations Representative at the Ministry of Tourism, Anya Hanna, joins me live in studio to talk about the grand finale that is set for tomorrow. So tell us what's happening. So Junkanoo Summer Festival is back with, we had two weeks of Grand Bahamian celebration started last week and tomorrow is the finale and so we're excited about about the bringing back Junkanoo Summer Festival at Smith's Point and so you know for a long time Smith's Point has been closed and so we're excited that from 6 p.m. to midnight the entire street of Smith's Point will be Junkanoo and so we're inviting you all to come out to Junkanoo Summer Festival tomorrow. What has been the reaction from residents and tourists alike mm -hmm. who have been coming out for the past few weeks? Well, you know, we provide free bus transportation for all guests at, at the hotels and the, the feedback has been phenomenal. We, we have a lot of persons stop us in the streets and they say, you know, y'all are doing a good job and we're excited about it and so we look forward to tomorrow. Anything else happening tomorrow apart from Junkano? Uh, no, so just tomorrow it'll be John Canoe, they'll be competing in costume mm -hmm. and we'll have, we have six John Canoe groups in competition. We have the Spartans, GB Asgards, Kingdom Culture, Superstar Rockers and Swingers and so they're excited, we're excited and we're looking forward to tomorrow. Are you pulling for any particular John Canoe group? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm pulling, the smart I'm pulling for all of them, you know. If you, if you, if you know John Canoe lovers, they're always in competition amongst each other, and so we're looking forward to tomorrow as well. Okay, give us the time again. 6 p.m. to midnight. 6 p.m. to midnight. Thank you so much for joining us Thank live you here me. in studio. Well, coming up, local transportation providers lending a helping hand ahead of the new school year. That story and a whole lot more. Stay with us.